Hi everyone, it's Ken LaRue from the Shotgun Team and here's our tip of the day in 30 tips in 30 days. This video is going to focus on the annotation tools. Now in the previous video tip, we focused on the zoom and the pan tools inside the overlay player. While we're discussing the annotation tools, I'm going to talk about a couple hotkeys for zooming and panning because they will help you be more efficient when you're doing very detailed annotation. Looking down at the bottom of the UI, we can see we've got our little pencil icon. That's our annotation tool. And if you have another tool active, you can use the A key as a hotkey to access the annotation tool. Now looking up along the top, because the annotation tool is active, we see all of our different annotation tools. There's the pencil tool, there's an arrow tool, an ellipse, a rectangle, the erase tool, and the text tool. And you'll notice as I select or activate each one of these, the different options for that individual tool is now available to me. A key part to understanding these tools are you need to set the options that you want for the tool before you start to create them. Because once it's created, you cannot alter and change these different options for the annotations you've already created. So for example, I'll select my pencil tool, I'll come in and I can change the thickness by clicking on these arrows. Another hotkey that's great to know is if you do have a mouse with a wheel, if you hover your cursor over the field for the thickness, you can then use that wheel on your mouse to make an adjustment to the thickness. Then you have your color pot. Clicking on this, I can come in and I can choose the color that I want. You can also adjust the opacity. And the same thing goes with the opacity field. If I bring my cursor over the field and I use the wheel on my mouse, I can adjust the opacity that way too. I'll choose close. So now I've got the thickness at eight and I've got my color to yellow. So I can come in and I can draw right on the screen. Pretty straightforward. Another hotkey for adjusting your thickness though is for the pencil tools, this is, if I hold the shift key and I click and drag, I can adjust to the maximum thickness of 50 to the minimum thickness of one. So that's a nice hotkey. Holding the shift key and clicking, dragging, you can adjust the thickness that way too. I'll activate the arrow tool. Now we have our thickness option. We also have the stroke color and the size, the width of the stroke, and we have our fill. And of course the wheel works the same way for your thickness value and your width value if you want to use your wheel on your mouse. I'll leave the thickness to eight. I'll change my color to a blue for the stroke. I'll change the fill also to a lighter blue. And I got the opacity set to 40 by default for the fill. So there'll be some transparency with it. You can of course adjust that again. I'll close that and I'm happy with this. And I can start drawing my arrows. Now a cut key for the arrow is if you hold the shift key and you click and draw, you will lock the arrow's creation to 45 degree increments. Then we've got our ellipse tool, same thing. You've got your color stroke, your fill and so on. You can click and drag. If you hold the shift key, you're going to constrain the ellipse to a circle. I've got my rectangle tool, same options. Let's just change the color for demonstration to green for both our stroke and our fill. I click and draw to create a rectangle. Holding the shift key will constrain it to a square. Then I'll activate the erase tool. You only have a thickness option. You also have the ability as the pencil, you can control the thickness by holding the shift key and clicking and dragging in the screen. But obviously the erase tool allows you to erase. It's going to erase any of the annotation marks you have made on the screen. And then of course there is the text tool where you have your text color, the font size, the text size, and your background. You click in the screen and you type. Okay. So my point of what I said earlier is now I cannot adjust any of these annotations that I made after I make them. So make sure you set the parameters and the options as you want them. The next option to understand is the undo and the clear buttons. And these have hotkeys also. If I click undo once, you'll see the text tool that I created disappears. I click undo again. I'm going to eliminate what the eraser did. Command Z on the Mac and Control Z on your Windows and your Linux systems will be the undo hotkey. The clear button will clear all annotations that you've made on this specific frame. And the hotkey for that is the option Command C on Mac and Alt Control C on Windows and Linux. So again, I'm gonna hold the Option Control and hit the C key. Now all annotation is cleared off of this frame. 
I'll hit Command Z to undo that. Now there's a very important part of the Command Z that you need to know, and that is I'm still at the current frame that I've created all of these annotations. So I can continue hitting Command Z and I will be undoing each one that I have created, okay? For demonstration, let me quickly just draw a rectangle and we're gonna create an ellipse over here. Now, I'm gonna move forward one frame by using my right arrow key. And then I'm gonna use my left arrow key and I'm going to go back to the frame that has the annotation. If I hit my Command Z, it's going to tell me it has nothing to undo. Once I moved off this frame, I committed these annotations to this frame as one annotation. And I can no longer individually undo each one of the annotations that I made. I can obviously, however, use the clear option, which will then clear everything. So once again, option command C, and I'm going to remove everything from this frame, even though I did advance one frame and came back one frame. And there's still one more hotkey for clearing everything on all frames. That is a hotkey combination of Shift, Option, Command, C on Mac, or Shift, Alt, Control, C on Windows and Linux. For example, I will create an elliptical on this frame. I move forward one frame. I will create a rectangle on this frame. I move forward another frame. I get the pencil tool. I draw on this frame. I move forward one more frame. I'm going to take the arrow, and I'm going to draw a couple arrows. So now if I go back frames, you'll see each frame has an annotation on it. Now I'm going to hold Shift, Option, Command, C. And if I go backwards on each frame, you'll see I've just eliminated all annotation on every single frame. Now in the previous video tip to this video, we talked about the zooming and panning tools inside the overlay player. And from that video, we know that the Z key is the hotkey to access your zoom tool and the X key is the hotkey to access your pan tool. Very often when you're creating annotations, I don't really want to switch to the zoom tool or the pan tool to make the zoom or pan adjustment that I want. I want to temporarily activate them. And there are hotkeys to do that also. So for example, I've got my pen tool. I want to draw a detailed line around the side of his head. I don't want to activate the zoom tool, zoom in, and then go back to the annotation tool. So what I can do is hold the command key on the Mac or control on Windows and Linux, and now I can zoom in and release the hotkey, and I'm back to having my annotation tool. So I can start to draw around here, and then I want to pan over, I can hold the Option key or the Alt key, and I can pan to the side, release that key, and I'm back having the annotation tool available to me. Hit the R key once again, and I'll zoom back to fit the frame. If you want to view a dialog box that shows you all the keyboard shortcuts, all the hotkeys that are available to you in the overlay player, you can hit the forward slash key and you'll bring up this dialog box. In here, you can scroll through and see every possible hotkey that you have available. All right, I know that was a lot, but that's our tip for today on annotations in the overlay player. 30 tips in 30 days.